everybody, I'm Sari Custer and this is Sari on Science. I'm here at Arizona Science Center and it is Shark Week, so I couldn't resist the opportunity to uh, get a little festive. And today we're up here in a mirror maze, Numbers in Nature. It is our newest traveling exhibition and it's amazing. It's all about math, patterns, and how you can see math all around us in nature. Okay, this thing, I can't see, so let's just, whew. Oh, so much better. Now I can see you. All right. So this exhibition is absolutely amazing. It's everything from fractals to the golden ratio to spirals and helping to explain nature, the human body, and then seeing its effects and everything from art, architecture, and music. So let's take a round. You've got to come check this thing out. Oh, and of course, I promised that I would share how sharks are connected. So let's walk this way. Uh, as you can see, I've got my shark costume on today. And anybody who knows anything about sharks know that they have a very special skin. And shark scales um, are really, really fine. So when you take a look at shark skin under a magnifying glass, or excuse me, under a microscope, uh, you can start to see that uh, pattern of the skin is laid out uh, really perfectly. And it's similar to a Vernoy pattern in the way other um, like things like corn are laid out. You'll see that here in the exhibition, it'll explain all of it. But what's really cool is that manufacturers are starting to use that pattern because they noticed that sharks don't have parasites on their skin. Whales tend to build up parasites and barnacles and things that'll build up. Uh, all those whales that you see um, that have you know, big humps on them, but those are barnacles. But sharks don't get that same buildup. The pattern of their skin with the ripples in it actually deflects different parasites and bacteria from building up. So companies are using that bio-inspired technology now to manufacture surfaces that don't let bacteria build up. So who knew? And it's all about patterns. So as you can see, this is our amazing numbers in nature. We've got the maze right behind us that we're going to take a look at in just a second. Um, and I see one of our awesome Blue Crew members, Janelle, over here. And we're going to go meet up with her and see if uh, maybe she wants to show us some of her favorite things. Oh, and she's talking to some guests. As you can see, I hear laughter coming. Maybe you can hear it. Maybe you can't, but coming from the maze. Hi, Janelle. Excellent. Let me get you a mic here because uh, I think I have one. Perfect. We're going to get Janelle mic'd up so you can hear her too. Awesome. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Excellent. It looks pretty busy in here. Yeah, it's pretty popping. Yeah, this is amazing. And I was hoping we were just sharing uh, that uh, uh, Mirror Maze Numbers in Nature is all about math, patterns, and the great things you can see. I'd love for you to take us through and maybe show a couple of your favorite things in this exhibition. Yeah, definitely. Come on. So you can actually see um, patterns all over nature. Oh, this one's pretty cool over here. I love this. So this is actually one of my favorites. So this is an ant hill, and they put metal in it, and then they dig up the metal, so you can actually see how the ant farm, at, excuse me, ant farm is formed. And then this is an example of what type of pattern? Is this fractals? Yes, this is the fractal. Fractal branching. So um, for anybody who's never heard of fractals, it's one of my favorites. It's taking a bigger shape and then breaking down into smaller and smaller shapes, but still similar to that original shape. So if you've ever seen leaves and the uh, branching inside leaves or trees or lightning, you get that same pattern where you take one shape and then break it down even further. So, all right, what's next on your list? Sorry, I kind of I saw this and had to take a look at it. No, it's one of my favorites, so you're good. I mean, we can just walk in a circle or whatever, but even just right here, you can see the spirals of the horn. So spiral is another p um, pattern that you will see a lot in nature. Excellent, and we've got two great examples from nature here, and I think this is a bighorn sheep, right? Big yeah. sheep. Oh, that's really cool. And those are really cool spiral horns. I didn't think about the, you see them in the curl, but you don't think that they're actually spirals, not just like one big exactly. curl. Exactly. It has to grow a little bit more for the full spiral to show. Um, I have one here where it's just not quite yeah, that big this is spiral. Kind of what you think is just that hook. You don't think about it continuing the spiral. Oh, I love that. All right. What else do we got? Maybe this way. I see yeah. some music back this yeah, way. Yeah, we totally have some music over here. All right. Music is all about patterns, so um, we have different musics that people can play with. It's all hands on. Wonderful. I'm playing with proportions. So if we pluck the strings and we can see that all the different ratios. Ooh, that's pretty loud too. Over here, if we change where the, uh, oh, that's pretty bad. That was pretty flat on my part. <laughs> <laughs> but look, looking at the different lengths and the proportions of the string, you get a different tone, right? Yeah, exactly. Why am I so bad at this? This sounds terrible for me, but oh, that's much louder than I expected it to be. 
Oh, and these guests over here are making music, it looks like, with uh, different patterns as well. Yeah, so we have little blocks. You can put them together and it creates a different song, but they are in the patterns to show you that music can be in patterns as well. Awesome, so we've seen some nature, we've heard music, and now we've got patterns. I see some patterns in art and architecture over this way. Yeah, definitely. So, um, buildings are you we use patterns in buildings we use patterns in everything if you just look around you, you may have not noticed but there's just patterns and uh one of the uh famous olympic buildings if i recall uh, i'm gonna forget what they call it they have a special name for it but it has this crazy pattern and it might be over here as well i don't want to interrupt this guest but it it's really amazing it has this uh, almost like a bubble pattern and I think they call it the nest I think that's what they called it um, but you can see how structurally sound it is based on curves and it actually has no internal columns they're able to use patterns and uh, the strength of the structure to build this whole building this huge building without any internal columns so wow, just phenomenal amazing. oh let's see if we can take a look I don't want to like I said I didn't want to get into anybody's way but I bet we can find it just so you can get a picture of it yeah, this one. Oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the Parthenon. We need the pattern over here. We'll look through patterns in architecture. There we go. Oh, that was the Parthenon. I wanna find the, uh, my shark hands aren't working to turn the <laughs> wheel over here. I couldn't grip onto it, so I need my actual hands. There we go. It keeps wanting to do the Parthenon, so you'll have to check out the nest. You'll have to, we'll, we'll put something up about it maybe online or find a way to Google it. So over this way, I know we continue our adventure through numbers in nature, and I see a whole line of people over here at this activity. This is so cool. Uh, this one's all about the golden ratio. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so the golden ratio, you find the golden ratio everywhere. So the human body is all about the golden ratio. So you'll see it's trying to load, but it will actually point out and they can reach up rings and um, it tells you the length of your arms, the length of your body, and it tells you how like close to that is the golden ratio is. Nice. And the golden ratio, I see it over here, 1.6. Is that what I'm seeing? Yes. So that ratio, you see everything from like certain spots on your hand to um, your sternum to your belly button mm -hmm. and just everywhere. So. Yeah, definitely. You can definitely, so the golden ratio, you can take your hand um, and one point is at the tip of your middle finger, at the base of your middle finger and at your palm and that is the golden ratio. Excellent. And if you're worried because symmetry, you've probably heard that symmetry is all part of it don't worry because a little imperfection really makes you perfect as an individual um, and there's a whole study on that with imperfection and asymmetry and, and beauty yeah and I definitely have done the whole arm ratio thing I, I'm nowhere near the golden ratio but that's all right all right let's keep moving yes. I don't want to take up too much more time and we definitely want to show you the mirror maze but I need to show you my all-time favorite over here which also has to do with fractals you might have noticed how excited I got about fractals but this piece right here is by far my favorite this is a Lichtenberg figure um, and this one Janelle I think you know too is caused by electricity oh, electricity yeah. that, yep. it so, looks like it actually it is if, and if you look at it it looks like captured lightning because that's pretty much what it is they charge this piece of acrylic and it stores up all this electricity until they discharge it and when they tap it it's almost like i don't know like seeing lightning happen because it discharges all this electricity and burns patterns into the acrylic and that's what you're seeing here it looks very feathery but it's really just a basically a fossil of the burn pattern of the electricity i just i love it i think it's absolutely beautiful and you can tell because when you look up at the sky and watch chain lightning happen you see the same fractal pattern where it looks like just a smaller part of a bigger chain oh Though i just love it it's just with so beautiful. lightning it is a smaller portion because it's happening so fast right so You'd, this you can see the whole picture it'd be like if you did a time lapse almost this one's just a lot bigger you're right and this one just makes some beautiful art so all right are you all ready to check out the mirror maze all right so, do you think you can give me a hand to Yeah, let's go in? through the mirror maze. All right, let's go through the mirror maze. Um, I want to make sure that I don't run into anybody. We're going to head back this way. So, for anybody who's just recently joining us, we've... 
Whew, if you want to make sure I don't trip over anything, we are highlighting the highlights of Amira May's Numbers in Nature. It is our most recent exhibition here at Arizona Science Center. It is a ton of fun. Oh, pardon me, guys. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it is a great way to beat the heat. Of course, we are four floors, 300 hands-on exhibitions. All right. Woo! Um, and we are always changing up here. We've got this all summer long now through September 4th, but we're a balmy 74 degrees when you're trying to get out of the heat. And we're gonna safely make our way back here towards the entrance of the maze and see if we can check out this 1800 square foot mirror maze that everybody's been talking about and really enjoying. So, all right, Janelle, have you gotten lost in here already? Uh, definitely, it can get pretty confusing. All right, so. All right, we're coming up to the entry and I see some people already, they're in here, they're taking selfies because wait till you see this. You've got to see the patterns that are created. We've got 1800 square feet of geometrically arranged mirrors that really are just spectacular. Oh, and now I see what I look like all dressed up as a shark. It's really rather entertaining, but let's move this way. Again, it's Shark Week, everybody. So we hope you get a chance to learn something, uh, a little something about sharks while you're here this week too. Can't help that pop culture trend. Oh my goodness, which way do I go? Hi. Okay. How am I gonna? Do you guys know the path through here? Oh my goodness, are we headed in the right direction? If I go, okay, this way. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost. All right, it looks like they know where they're going. So, I mean, check this out. If you take a look around, it almost looks like it goes forever and ever and ever. Woo. Um, like infinity mirrors, this geometric arrangement reflect, reflects the light in certain ways that it looks like it keeps going and going and going and you totally get lost. Admittedly, I've been through here like 10 times and gotten lost half of those where I thought I was going to the exit but got turned around and ended up coming out the entrance. It's crazy. Have you gotten lost already today? Yes. <laughs> and I keep seeing people come back and forth so I know that it's very challenging but yet very fun. Um, and something that's also exciting is the lights keep changing in here and give you a different effect everywhere you go. Um, but that also tends to throw me off because I can't remember what anything looked like. So, all right, have there been any questions today? I doubt it, but I know you're gonna have some once you get here. Come check out Amira Maze Numbers in Nature here at Arizona Science Center. And of course, we still have um, some very special things this summer, including our day pass. So check that out at azscience.org. Gives you a little discount if you wanna make the most of your trip. And we'll be here all day, every day, 10 to 5 p.m., seven days a week. Check us out again, azscience.org for all your questions. And uh, we hope you've had a lot of fun today. We'll see you next time with Sari on Science. I'm gonna go get lost.